Hello everybody, welcome to the Moonland Institute. We're your source for quality NFT news, interviews, and content. If you haven't already, join the official Institute Discord. This isn't your typical shill Discord. This is a collective of artists and collectors seeking to make connections, give advice, and uplift each other. I have created the Commission channel as a private spot for artists and collectors that have the Institute seal of approval to convene. If you wish to join that, contact me personally. Otherwise, we'd love to help you or just vibe in the general chat. Light up, take a drink, and let's get into the episode. Today our special guest is my good friend Mindfuzz. He's a fantastic person, and has just been getting started in the NFT art scene, and is already starting to achieve success. I interviewed him for his inspirations, goals, and advice that I think any aspiring NFT artist will find useful. Check out his art and his other social media links. I take judging projects very seriously, and after looking through all of his work I can say with certainty that he's got big things ahead for him. Alright, I'm breaking down this video into multiple parts. First Mind Fuzz will tell us about himself, and what his background, inspirations, and struggles he had to overcome to become the artist he is today. Then we'll move on to a showcase of Mind Fuzz recent collection release. After that, we'll move into advice for aspiring artists. I first ask Mind Fuzz about his, well, origin story. This is what he said. My mother and aunt are both artists and encouraged me at a young age to explore different materials, drawing styles, and creativity. As a kid growing up with undiagnosed ADHD, I only ever found true focus when I touched pencil to paper. I would forget what people said seconds after they said it, I couldn't sit still, and I had a really hard time with studying in school. Art however, was crystal clear. My school notes were flooded with mountains of graphite and seas of ink that would make a normal person question how I was even passing my classes. I spent 20 years doodling to help give me a brief escape from my reality into a new one that I could control. When looking for inspiration inside yourself, ask yourself, what is my childhood? Create a bullet list of everything you reminisce in. You will often find that those same passions or experiences as a child are directly evident in your artwork. This is true for me. I should also mention I have strong aphantasia. Essentially my brain is unable to create mental pictures. The closest I can get is maybe a grey silhouette 30% of the time. Not to go on too much of a tangent but when I was in elementary school I have a core memory of my teacher having all the students close their eyes and imagine a beach. While I sat and stared into the black void behind my eyelids, my classmates were seeing sand, waves, and a sun-kissed sky. This inability to conjure images provided me with a secondary skill that has become extremely useful. I became exceptionally good at creating reference drawings of life, people, and artwork which synthesized very well with all of my studies and training this year. I found Mindfuzz's background very inspiring. It reminds me of a Brian Eno quote, take your weakness and turn it into your greatest strength. With the true heart of an artist, Mindfuzz produces fantastic work no matter what challenges he faces. Applying to you, fellow Institute viewer, if you find yourself facing challenges, don't look at it as an obstacle to creating art. Much of the world's best art is forged through times of difficulties. Use it as a source of inspiration and motivation for creation. Alright let's take a look at Mind Fuzz's gallery he has prepared for us today. He's chosen his most recent three pieces to show us, all from the limited Mind Fuzz collection. Let's begin with Mind Fuzz number 04. This is a fantastic piece overall. Personally upon viewing this piece, I was immediately hit with a sense of nostalgia in an almost liminal sense. I can't quite put my finger on it, but this work just breathes familiarity. This piece appears to use a tried and true artistic method known as the Renaissance Triangle. This is a method developed in the lower Renaissance in which the shaping of a painting guides your eyes through its contents. When viewing this piece, your eyes are likely to end up looking at the green flag since both color and shaping direct the flow of the painting to the top. 
I might just be an art nerd, but it's pretty damn cool. Let's move on to mind fuzz number 07 which is my favorite piece of the three. Although the piece is cluttered, the composition and usage of empty space breathes life into it. I could spend a long time looking at the details of this wizardly figure. It is almost like there is an entire lore behind this single work. Fantastic. For the final piece in this on Cyber Gallery, we have Mind Fuzz number 08. I get some Picasso inspiration from this one, in terms of its almost modernist abstract art qualities. Once again, Mind Fuzz's usage of negative space breathes life into the composition. It creates for an interesting viewing experience, as some parts of the painting are highly detailed whilst others are much more simple. Now that we've viewed the gallery, I'll show you all some pieces and commentary that Mindfuzz sent me on Discord. This piece is a reflection on how capitalism masks its negative aspects with flashy branding in order to condition consumers' mindsets. This piece reflects on our more primal origins and traditions, which have been replaced with relatively silly things like stock trading and consumer culture, that is monkey business. This piece reflects on the loss of ornate traditions and mythology in exchange for the convenience and comfort of the modern city. I can always appreciate an artist that knows what their work stands for. Mind Fuzz has much more art, and if you want to see more, check out his OpenSea in the description of this video. Trust me, you won't regret it. These works and galleries are definitely some of my favorites I've seen hands down. Now, let's move on to artist advice. I asked Mind Fuzz what some of the top advice he could give to aspiring NFT artists. I came to the harsh realization that most artists arrive upon. Art is not inherently a talent. It is a skill. And for someone like me who was already halfway behind, not being able to imagine things haha, I saw a long road ahead of me in terms of improving to a point that I was satisfied with. That's a very important distinction with art. My philosophical advice for aspiring artists it feels silly saying this since I am an aspiring artist haha <laughs> fellow artist happiness is temporary, and it can come from likes, shares, comments, or even people buying your art. But it is a temporary feeling. Joy on the other hand comes from creating art for yourself in the moment. Life is a dance not a marathon. In 20 years when you look back at your art you won't fondly remember the interactions people had with it. You will remember the feelings and mental state you were in while creating the piece. And that's okay. Let your emotions flow, explore the taboo, destroy your style just to build it back up again like the tower. My technical advice for aspiring artist. 1. Use every tool available to you. Try different mediums, softwares, and techniques. Don't let people tell you that digital tools are not real art either. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a house built with a hammer compared to a nail gun. It is solely your art, it's about the process and your personal growth. Use any means necessary to grow. 2. Get a sketchbook, create a goal for your studies or sketches. My current goal is to do 1000 sketches in my sketchbook by the end of the year. Currently I'm at 623 since January so I have a lot of catching up to do haha. <laughs> My sketchbook is filled with every aspect of my art. Each small bit builds onto the next. I have rapidly transformed my technical ability by forcing myself to draw daily. Remember it's a skill. Advice for artists with ADHD. It's super easy to get caught up in attention to detail without looking at the big picture. Make sure your line work and silhouette is roughly finished before you start hyper-focusing on small parts of the art. These big intricate pieces you are making are cool to you because you know where everything is but, the normal viewer of your art just sees a giant Where's Waldo painting of details without understanding the purpose of the art. You have a lot of cool ideas but you need to simplify so that they don't get messy. Final advice. After you are done exploring this channel go practice your anatomy I promise it helps in so many ways besides character design. That concludes our episode for today. I hope you all enjoyed this fantastic interview and exposition by my friend Mindfuzz. Once again, I recommend taking a look through his portfolio. At the time of this video listing, his pieces are rapidly selling out, so if you're interested be sure to hurry and grab one. 
We here at the Institute hope you found this video to be a chill vibe and informative or inspiring. Thank you for watching. Otherwise, hop in our Discord and catch us on Twitter. Subscribe to us for more content, and more mind fuzz for sure. We appreciate every single one of you. We'll see you next time.